Let's talk about burnout. It's a topic that I feel like a lot of people, especially entrepreneurs, moms, we are always faced with this feeling of reaching a point of burnout, reaching that breaking point where we're like, what the heck is going on? I need to take a step back and all the things, but not really knowing how to navigate that space. So I just want to share a little bit about my journey and my experience with burnout and then some things that I do to avoid burnout and how I kind of came out of the feeling of being burnt out because gosh, like it's the worst feeling in the world. Like it really is the worst feeling when you know that you are exhausted, you are at your wit's end, something needs to change, but you don't really know how to change it. And then especially in 2023, I just feel like a lot of people are just moving into this space of we want to be healed. We want to be whole. We don't want all the stress and the drama and just all the extra that comes along with being burnt out. And I feel like especially as business owners, it's so easy for us to find ourselves in a place where we are feeling just done, right? We're feeling like burnt like we're over it. So for me, my experience with burnt out happened after I gave birth to my first son. Um, when I, at that time, I really didn't have like a grip on that whole work life balance thing. And I just, I, I really wasn't prepared to be like, to be like, quite frank, like I was not prepared for how my life would change after having kids. And so um, I had my son and I was literally in the hospital at, you know, like, four hours post-op because I had a c-section so I was like you know I went through 18 hours of labor then you know this whole surgery and now I have this baby and literally four hours later I was like creating content for my clients and I was posting and I was engaging for them I was doing all these things literally in a hospital bed and it's at that point that everything just started to go downhill for me I felt super overwhelmed you know of course like postpartum you have all those just like hormones that are running through you and all the changes that your body is making it was just a lot happening at that time and I found myself reaching a point of like oh my gosh like I cannot keep up I can't keep up with my clients I can't keep up with myself and it was just a lot and I, I went through a season of I'm just done like I'm over it I was already reaching that point while I was pregnant so I was already like approaching the point of burnout and that breaking point really was like being in the hospital bed creating content for clients like that was it for me and so at that point I really had to just sit down and recognize what got me to the point of feeling burnt out I kind of had like an inkling like leading up to being in that hospital bed like I had an inkling that I was reaching and approaching burnout but I didn't do anything to like pump the brakes or stop I was just like oh this is what business is you know I have to work super hard blah 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 like I just had all these different thought processes and so I just continued to like push and continue to for lack of better words hustle even though I I should have been in a season where I was pulling back and I'm not one of those people that's like oh you know hustle culture is so bad blah blah I love hustle okay I am I'm pro hustle all the way but I, I'm also pro seasons right so there's going to be seasons of hustle and there's going to be seasons where you take a step back where you're able to rest and do all the different things and the mistake that I made is that instead of slowing down like I needed to I kept going and I kept going really hard and so I had to sit down and ask myself okay what led me to this point because I don't want to experience this again and I want to be able to move forward and I feel like something that happens a lot is that we recognize or we know that we've hit a wall that we're burning out and we don't stop right we don't we don't actually acknowledge it for what it is and give ourselves a chance to take a step back and so for me the first thing that I did was I just figured out okay what got me to this point and there were it was a lot of micro decisions that I made that got me to the point of I'm feeling burned out and I feel like a lot of times we don't talk about that like a lot of times we say like oh you know I was just posting a lot or I was just showing up a lot blah 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 but we don't realize that there are micro decisions that we make every single day that lead us closer and closer and closer to that point of burnout it could be something as simple as not keeping up with your routine not going for daily walks like those those little micro decisions that you make over time leads to that full comprehensive feeling of burnout and I just had to really sit down and figure out okay what got me here right so once i like recognized okay this is what got me here i was able to then realign myself with my why because i reached a point where i was like yo i don't want to do this anymore i don't want a business i don't want to work i just want to be a mom and just like call it a day which is fine right there's nothing wrong with that and i still have those days now where i'm like bro like all i want to do is be a mom like i don't care about nothing else i'm just gonna be a mom but 
I had to realign myself with my why. Like, why was I building this business? Why was I working so hard for these clients? Why was I doing these things? And do I want to continue doing that? Like, and I had to be honest with myself. Is this something that I want to continue? I also had to like really set some boundaries on what was I going to do moving forward? Like, I could not keep doing the same thing that I was doing that got me to this point. That's why the very first thing and the most important thing I feel like when we approach burnout is to really sit down and assess what were those things that led to this moment? What, what were those micro decisions? What were the big decisions, right? What were the big things that we did that led to this moment of feeling burned out? And so at that point, I had to really like set some firm boundaries. Like, okay, I know why I'm doing this. I know that I want to keep doing this, but I had to set some firm boundaries with myself in terms of like how I used my time, what kind of clients I worked with, things like that. And actually, it also led me to closing a business. So at the time, I was running three different companies. And when I like hit that wall of burnout and I really sat down and thought about my why, I realized that one of those businesses, it was just way more stress than it was worth and it wasn't really something that felt good for me and I don't regret that decision at all because now when I look at things when I just look at how my life has been since then it's been a night and day difference and so sometimes you're gonna have to make those hard decisions where you're like okay maybe this means that I have to give this thing up right because it's not really aligned with the vision that I have for my life or my values or with the time that I have right we have to be realistic I feel like so often like we are not realistic but like we have to be realistic and as moms you can do it all right but we can't do it all at the same time and so sometimes we have to pick and choose what we're going to juggle on our plate at this time and for me I just wasn't willing to sacrifice my time and my energy like that. And I never wanted to be in a position again where I am laying in a hospital bed and I'm sitting here doing client work because I feel like I can't stop. I feel like, I, you know, there's I don't have a team that can do things or I just did not want to put myself in that position again. And so for me, the best decision was for me to close one leg of my business. And again, I do not regret that decision at all. Like I'm so like hindsight, like now that I'm past and I'm just like, yes, I made the best decision. But in the moment, it was like really scary. It was really hard because a great amount of my income did come from that business. So it was definitely scary to say like, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. But when I really thought about realigning myself and figuring out what my boundaries are and figuring out what was most important to me it just led me to realize that I could not keep going the way that I was going so something else that like helps me just like kind of avoid burnout or to kind of navigate that space as I was coming out of that season of burnout is to really focus on keeping my to-do list short and just really focus, like really embrace and understand what prioritization is. Prior to having kids, prior to reaching burnout, I was one of those people that I, that I was doing all the things, right? I was doing all the things and there was no rhyme or reason or process. It was just, oh, everyone's on Instagram, I'm gonna be on Instagram. Everybody has a Facebook group, I'm gonna have a Facebook group. Everybody has this, I'm gonna be here. Like I was just literally doing all the things because I felt like that's what I needed to do in order to grow. And I feel like there's a whole other message in that in itself because it's like sometimes we just have to stop looking at what everybody else is doing and focus on what we're actually creating. But in hindsight, there are a lot of things that I wish I would have changed in hindsight that led me to that point of burnout. But I also realized that I had to experience burnout in order to get to the place that I am today. So did it suck? Yes, definitely. But was it worth the experience and worth just the growth that I had through that experience? A hundred percent. And so for me, I really had to get really clear on what are my priorities? What are the most important things that need to be done? To be done? I had to sit down and really strategize and think about, okay, this is what my business looks like. This is what my life looks like, right? This is what my time looks like. What is the most important, right? What are the most important priorities for my business? And I had to stop writing these super long to-do lists. Like I used to have page long, like an eight by 11 page. I used to have a page long list of to-do items to do every single day. When you have a newborn, that is just ridiculous for lack of like it's just ridiculous i mean with kids it's ridiculous right and it's overwhelming and a lot of times we cherry pick what things we're going to do and it ends up being the things that are not actually important and so i had to realize that in order for me not to approach that feeling of burnout i had to stop looking at these super long to-do lists because honestly they would make me feel defeated like i would feel so defeated that i was not able to finish all the things on my to-do list for the day right and I mean if you're anything like me and you like checking things off it is so easy to feel defeated when you do not hit 
you know, whatever goals or whatever objectives, whatever tasks that you have for the day, it's very defeating. And so I had to shift a lot and say, okay, how, like what, what's a priority, right? And for now, I usually set anywhere from one to three priorities for the day and that's it. And some days, okay, some days, let's be honest, it's my kids, right? Some days, I, like the only thing I can do is wake up and take care of tiny humans like that's all like I don't have the capacity I don't have the bandwidth I don't have the mental none of that all I can do is take care of tiny humans and that is a job well done I feel like we have to talk more about that especially as moms because so often we like get in our heads and we feel like oh you know I'm not building as fast or I'm not doing you know what this person over here is doing it does not matter it does not matter we are all running our own races and you're gonna get to your destination at the right time you know and that's something that I really had to learn. I had to learn that just because I wanted to be at a certain level or at a certain place now, that did not mean that that was the best timing for me. And so prioritization, really like paring down my to-do list to like the most important things has been something that's been helpful coming out of being burnt out and experiencing that season of burnout. Something else that has helped is batching. So I feel like we talk a lot about batching in the online space, especially as business owners, right? Everything is like batch, batch, batch. But it's so true, like batching really is helpful. Switching between tasks has been shown to decrease efficiency and lead to mental fatigue. Our brains work better when focused on one primary task. One thing that I've found in in the last couple of years especially post burnout is that batching has led me to really get things done in my business I used to be the person that you know oh I'm working on captions and then I get an email and I start checking my email and then while I'm checking my email I think of an email that I want to write so then I write an email like I'm jumping from task to task doing all these things and by the end of my work session my co-working session or whatever child don't nothing be done like no work is done and I didn't realize that this was a habit of mine until I reached burnout, right? When I experienced burnout, I realized I had a bad habit of starting on things and not finishing and working on multiple different tasks at one time. Even though I would say that I was batching, I really wasn't batching because even though in a time period I was supposed to be working on one thing, I ended up working on 10 different things at the exact same time. So batching has been really helpful because now I'm able to sit down and say, okay, for this one hour block, I'm only going to focus on recording YouTube videos. I'm only going to focus on recording for the podcast. I'm only going to focus on scripting and I turn everything off. And that could be really challenging to like turn all the different things off. I have 5,000 tabs open on my desktop. Like it can be a lot but I turn everything off so that I can focus on the task at hand because let's be honest as moms we do not have a ton of time right we don't have a ton of time to actually sit down and dedicate to work so we really have to be even more intentional about the time we do have and when it comes to just batching and just using your time wisely you have to sit down and get that mess done okay I don't have much time to record before my kids start wanting to bust down the door, right? So I have to sit down and just record. If I if I start recording, pause because I got an email, then start. Oh my gosh, I will never get I will never get anything done. I will not be able to stay consistent. And I think that's something that happens to a lot of business owners and especially moms in business because you like the first thing that we forget to do or the first thing that we don't do is market for our own business right we don't continue to create content we don't continue to you know um send emails or write posts or whatever we need to do to actually market our business we don't do those things because we prioritize the client right which is we should we should right we should prioritize the con the client but we also need to prioritize our business as well and our growth of our business and you can't do that if you're jumping from task to task to task right you can only do that when you really take that time to focus and batch things together i have a friend her name is brianna queen she has a bomb youtube channel and she says if it can't be batched it gets scratched and i felt that like man i felt that so hard because it's so true if i can't batch something it's not going to get done, right? It, it, it's just not going to get done because there, I have so many moving parts of my life, just in my personal life, that when it comes to my business, I need to have streamlined systems, a process. This is where I'm going to focus my energy so that things get done, okay? Things need to get done. So for example, some things I like to batch, I like to write my emails for the month. Um, I like to cr like edit or like record my podcast episodes all at one time. Um, I like to, you know, sit down and have sessions where I just record YouTube videos. A couple of weeks ago, I think I recorded like three videos at one time, right? I really focus on 
what are some tasks that are all similar that require the same amount of energy that I can knock out all at one time. Even something like client calls, I try to batch those together. So on Tuesdays and Thursdays, those are the days that I have client calls and I batch them together back to back to back, right? So there'll be like a three hour window and that is when client calls happen. Also with my photography studio, with the photography studio, I batch photo shoots. I batch photo shoots. Like I know people are like, how do you batch photo shoot? Yeah, I will have multiple people come at one time. I'm making an event, multiple people come at one time or I will batch and basically do clients back to back to back. So there won't be like, oh, I have a client at eight and then my next client is at noon. Girl, no ma'am, we're gonna do eight, nine, 10, 11. <laughs> color of the day right batching every as much as you can is going to be key because I, I used to be the person that like I would have an eight o'clock shoot and then a 12 o'clock shoot and all that time in between I would lose my momentum I would lose my excitement I would be tired because I'm just wandering around the streets or wandering at a coffee shop or whatever and for some people that's cool right but for me that's not how my brain works that's not how my mind works my energy significantly decreases right especially because I have to wake up at eight in the morning like I'm not a morning person what is going on here so Matching tasks has just been super helpful and has helped me be one, more efficient, but two, more productive when it comes to getting things done in my business. And I also feel like it's helped me from becoming burnt out because now I'm really like streamlining and systematizing what is actually being done in my business in order to move the needle forward. So this next one is to hire help where you can, right? And this could be in your personal life or in your business. And I try to be really clear, like when it comes to hiring help or like outsourcing that it does not always have to be business. I feel like a lot of times as business owners, when we think about outsourcing, we think about, oh, I need to hire a VA or I need to hire, you know, someone to do my social media or whatever. And while part of me understands the rationale and the logic behind that, a lot of times there are way better things that we can invest in besides another team member. And y'all don't come for me, please don't come for me because I know, I get it. I've done, I've done it all, right? I've, I've hired a team, I've hired people for home, like I've done both sides of it. Here's what I'm gonna say you know what you need in each season and so there was a season of my life where the best investment of my money was in someone to help me at home which meant i would hire i would send my laundry out to a laundry service or i would hire like a housekeeper to come in twice a month um well actually it was like once a month but sometimes it'd be like twice a month um, or, but then there were other seasons where, um, especially like when I just had my last maternity leave, where I hired um, a VA, I had a podcast manager, I had a, a content creator, right? I had multiple people on my team to help me so that I could get ready for maternity leave and take all the time off. So you'll know what you need depending on the season. But one thing I will say is you are, you're going to get so much back by investing, but you have to be smart with your investment because I will say I made some pretty dumb investments. Um, and uh, like, I hate to say it was dumb, but like I made some pretty like, uh, I did not think this all the way through investments. Um, and it was a learning lesson, right? But I also wasn't burnt out. So it is what it is. I guess it's, I still won in the end. So one of the most important things that I did when I was experiencing burnout and when I was just navigating that whole headspace of like, what in the world is going on here? I threw out my schedule. I was done like I threw out my schedule I used to have a schedule and I realized that with a newborn with you know just all the mental things I had going on a schedule was not gonna work but now that I'm reflecting on it what I really did is I just gave myself more grace and buffer time I was really intentional in that season especially as I was trying to get through burnout I spent a lot of time making sure that I put as much white space on the calendar as possible and so this meant I significantly cut down on client calls now I no longer do client calls I will do I, I do a few client calls but for the most part my calendar is not cluttered up with client calls I used to pack my schedule back to back with like multiple different things like oh I'm gonna do this zoom for this person I'm gonna do you know this call over here like I used to pack it with so many different things and I got to a point where I was like no I'm clearing off my schedule like I want to see as much white space as possible and so I really was intentional about okay today this is the one thing that I'm gonna focus on and once it's done I am done for the day also, I used to be the person that was like planning back to back launches. And I know this is a common, like it's a popular thing that's coming up right now in the online space where you launch something and then you launch another offer and then you launch this mini offer and you do all these things. No, I had to be done with that. So I like cancel a lot of launches. I, I paired myself down to, or I, I brought myself down to like maybe four launches. Um, now I do a few more launches, but it's because I have a little bit more capacity. But when I was going through that season of burnout, and even now I'm really intentional about, okay, I'm not going to do a ton of launching because launching is exhausting for me, right? It's, it's not something that, you know, comes 
easy it's not super exciting for me and so because of that I have to be really intentional about how often I do it so that I don't burn myself out and those back-to-back -back launches were killing me like they were they were just they were taking me out because I was doing client work then I was trying to launch these things like there was just too much happening and I had to pull that back and I needed to see more white space on the calendar I needed to see more times where I had the freedom to talk about any offer I wanted to talk about. It didn't have to be just, oh, I'm launching this offer and I'm pushing this super, super hard and I can't talk about anything else. I had to really free up what I was actually doing and what I was actually selling in my business. I will say throwing away my schedule was probably one of the hardest things I did because I am a huge planner. Like I love planning. I love like strategizing. I just love having everything down to the detail. And so it was really hard for me to like go through a season of, okay, I'm going to create as much white space as possible in this calendar. I don't want to see a ton of stuff happening over here. And I also don't want to over plan. And that was super hard for me because I pre previously, I was the type of person that I like time block and then in the time block like to the minute I would like break down what I'm gonna do I'll be honest what I'm doing right now like batch recording I've actually mapped out like every hour of what's supposed to be happening like that's the kind of planner I am and so it was really hard in that season to break myself away from planning so much but I will say when I did that it allowed me to give myself so much more grace and flexibility and things actually started getting done because I wasn't overwhelming myself with a million to do's and then if I didn't get something done at a certain time like feeling defeated like it just helped me mentally kind of cleanse myself from the pressure that I was putting on myself with my business. So a boundary I set for myself especially after I experienced the season of burnout was I wanted to make sure that I was taking time off. For me taking vacation was just not a thing that I did and I realized that that was one of those micro decisions that really led me to the point of burnout. I wasn't taking vacation and I wasn't taking even a day off like I literally worked seven days a week. I There, there were some weeks that I would have a photo shoot every single day Monday through Sunday there was no stop and you know while yeah it was cool to make a bunch of money it also really sucked and I was really really exhausted and that's what really kind of helped push me towards that burnout towards that break breakdown point and so something that I really set and a boundary I set for myself is to sit down and plan what day each week I was going to take completely off which for me now is Saturdays I take that day completely off and then also being intentional about setting my calendar to have vacation time and even if I don't go anywhere like it doesn't have to be oh we're going to Disney we're going here we're going no girl I just take the whole week off of work and now I've gotten to the point even where sometimes we will wake up in the morning and I can just already tell my energy is off and I'm off for the day. Like it is what it is. And, you know, obviously if I have client calls and stuff, I still do those. But if there's nothing pressing on the calendar that needs to be done, child, I will take a day off so fast. It's ridiculous because micro decisions, that's what leads you to that burnout point, right? That's what gets you to the point where you're like, oh my God. I, you, you don't want to do it anymore, right? Business doesn't become, like business is not exciting. You know, being home, like it's overwhelming. Like those things happen by making small decisions over time that mentally tax you, mentally drain you. And so now if I wake up and I'm just like a little bit off, I'm like, mm -mm, I don't think today's going to be a work day. And it's okay, right? Like one thing that I've realized is that nothing in business is an emergency. Nothing in business just, oh my gosh, it has to be done right now or the, it's going to be the end of the world. I, I just have yet to experience it. You know, I've yet to experience it. And when you set proper boundaries with clients, when you are batching things together, when you're more proactive, when you stop putting a billion and one things on your to-do list, you start to realize that so much more gets done and you have the freedom to take breaks and take time off when you actually need it. Clients know that we're human. And I think that that's something that we fail to remember. Like clients know that we're human. We're not robots. Okay. We are human. And people understand that sometimes you need a mental health day. And that can simply, like I've told people sometimes like, hey, I need to take a mental health day. Like today is just a rough day. I need to take a mental health day. Um, there, there was a time where I was like going through a few things with, um, with King and he had like some doctor's appointments, stuff like that. And it was overwhelming for me. And I told my clients, hey. I need to come mental health day. We got some health stuff going on over here and I just need a, I need a second. I'll be back tomorrow. No one was like, oh my God, Kay, you suck. Like, I can't believe, no, no. We just have to communicate. I feel like that's like super, super key, but take the time that you need. So something else that has helped me and I didn't even realize that this was something that I needed is I started going outside. I started taking walks. I started really just like 
doing things to keep my mind fresh. And I didn't realize like how much or how helpful being outside was until I hit that point of burnout. One thing I used to say all the time on my podcast is how like I would accidentally go, you know, three days in a row, four days in a row and not go outside. And while in theory, it's like, oh my gosh, she's working so hard. You go girl. Woo, woo, woo. But it was also really, really toxic and just really unhealthy to never leave the house right to be in the house all the time and so for me I had to realize and I had to like set a new habit and a, a new boundary for myself to hey girl like go outside that lack of fresh air of you know just a new perspective like it was so it was something that I needed and I didn't realize how helpful it was to just cleanse my mind to just help me see things from a different perspective and it's a habit that I've continued to do ever since then. The last two things go together but the last two things are automating things that can be automated in your business and streamline things that can be just simplified in your business. I've realized when I was going through burnout that I was over complicating a lot of the things that I was doing. I was like I said, I was doing the most, like I was trying to do literally everything. And it led me to a point of just, I wasn't excited about the things that I was doing because I was doing too much. And so I got to a point where I really just learned how to automate certain tasks in my business. I used to like manually send out contracts and manually, you know, send out different replies, or I would have to like write every single email from scratch, even though it was the same email that I wrote to a whole other client, right? And so I had to figure out how do we automate these things? How do we simplify and create workflows and systems? And so now I'm really like intentional about using tools to help me simplify, using tools so that I can have workflows. I love Dubsado because I can create workflows. Uh, my client increase right i have a system i have a workflow to handle client inquiries i sometimes i don't like sometimes a client will inquire and they'll pay and it's like it'll it just everything just happen automatically and i'm like oh my gosh like even to this day i'm still surprised at like how everything happens automatically because i remember when someone used to inquire how i had to go to my email type them a response you know do all these things go back and forth with them like i remember having to do that and now literally they can just book online and I see it on my calendar and it's like wow like it's it, it just oh my gosh it's just like it's a weight lifted and a lot of times we stress our own selves out because we don't have systems we don't have processes in place and so now I really just take the time to automate what I can and to streamline what I can anything that you know requires back and forth I try to figure out okay how can I simplify this process right how can I simplify this so that both of us have a good experience so when it comes to streamlining my business I like to look at my business each quarter or at least every six months and check my energy and figure out where can I make something simpler I also am trying to see like where am I leaking energy where am I doing the most for lack of better words because when I am doing the most that is when I start making decisions that lead me to a point of burnout so I have to be really intentional about where am I spending my time where am I spending my energy so I don't experience burnout so a few questions I ask myself are what is essential to the growth of my business what actually needs to be done to support my clients what offers products or services are a waste of time or not profitable where can you increase your prices so you feel compensated for your effort? What tasks are you doing that are redundant or necessary? And this right here may indicate where you need systems to automate, outsource, or cut. So the goal of these questions is just to help me trim the fat, right? Just to help me figure out where am I leaking energy? Where am I doing too much? Where can I improve so that there's a streamlined process and so I can feel less overwhelmed with doing all the things in my business and instead make sure that I'm running a highly efficient, profitable, and non-burnout <laughs> type of company. That is it with talking all things, navigating burnout, my experience with burnout, and all that jazz. I hope these tips were able to help you. Feel free to share your experience with burnout or maybe even like some things that you have done to help you either not experience burnout or to avoid, you know, to avoid burnout, to navigate burnout, all those different things. Share those with me in the comments below. And I have a video on how to set better boundaries with social media. And this was one of the key things that I did also to help me navigate burnout when I experienced it. So go check out that video. And until next time, I will talk to you later, darling. Okay. That was a lot longer than I wanted. I don't know how I'm going to do.